Hey guys, Kevin Rogers, Bobby Garland TV, 2019. It's actually February 1st today. We have several seminars coming up. Um, tonight we'll be at Bass Pro Shops, Crappie Madness. Crappie Madness is happening all over the country. Hopefully there's Crappie Madness uh, taking place at your Bass Pro Shops. And then after that, we also have Crappie University. <clears throat> I want to do a quick video. I've been asked several, several times to walk through what's in my boat, how I set my boat up for a tournament, um, and, and need to understand, I set my boat up if I was everyday fishing the same way as I do tournament fishing. But I'm going to walk you through everything that I put in this boat. Perfect time to do it. This is our brand new 2019 Bass Cat. Brand new. Just got here. There's not a thing in this boat. So I'll walk you through everything I put in this boat to prepare me for a day's fishing. Um, a lot of you folks um, not interested in this, your bank fishermen will have more videos for you guys fishing off the banks, cork bobber, all that's going to, we're going to try to expand our reach and the good, that's what's amazing about crappie fishing. You can do it however you want. You can fish out of a brand new uh, bass boat, you can fish out of a canoe, you can fish off the bank. That's what makes crappie fishing so unique. But for you guys that have asked, uh, here's the walkthrough of our tournament rig and what goes into this boat on an on on everyday basis so and stay tuned for 2019 bobby garland we have all kinds of cool stuff coming so let's walk through this thing brand new fresh and fresh off the lot let's start filling this sucker up kind of cool brand new mercury and all the mercury's mercury does not make a two-stroke mortar anymore they uh, all four stroke. This right here, powerful, powerful tool for spider rigging. Yes, I'm not a troller, but there are tournaments we're getting ready to fish that you cannot compete if you don't troll. Therefore, until they ban it, we're going to be trolling. All right, let's get started and uh, show you what goes in this boat. Okay, guys, we're going to start on the left side of the deck, uh, what people would call a rod locker. All right, this is the left, I'm sorry, the right side, right behind the, the driver's side rod locker. And this is what I consider um, to be my junk drawer, if you will. And most people put rods in here. I put all my rods on the left-hand side. And I have I have been storing my stuff the same way for 30 years, so I know where everything's at. I start, I always have a socket set, always miscellaneous uh tools you got to have tools in nippers cutting hooks if one gets in your hand miscellaneous screwdrivers you got to have um, that's the tools I put in here but the tool set will help you uh, remove a prop it's got a little socket set in it in case you break your prop you break this prop off your trolling motor won't work it'll vibrate so bad so I always have an extra prop it does you no good to have an extra prop if you can't take the thing off in the water so that's why I have that tool set in there important rope always have a thing of rope don't be the guy that doesn't help another boat back to the ramp because someday you're going to want someone to haul you back i can't count the times i've been hauled back to the boat ramp in my 30 years countless people have stopped and hauled me back so if i see someone stranded i always want to help them return because you're going to need it too you gotta have this right gotta have a fire extinguisher per law gotta have a throw cushion per law um, I put a paddle in there just to be safe. Nothing worse than being stuck out on the water. Um, and then my life jackets. I have all kinds of life. I'm going to put four individual life jackets. I like the inflatable kind. There's four of them going in the boat. That's in my junk drawer side, like I like to call it. I know everything that's in here. Miscellaneous minnow nets. Bird minnow nets. <laughs> this is for our trolling. I put those down in there. And this guy right here, I throw my net in there. A net, you say, no net man, right? When I am jig fishing, I do not use a net. I set the hook and I swing them right in the boat. The reason I do that, you set the hook and you bring that fish to the top of the water and you sit there and hold him, you're giving him slack and he can come off. I swing him right in the boat. Trolling, out the front of the boat. Gotta have this thing so you don't have a mess. Um, and then I have my caps and Coleman measure for all my fish. That's all that goes in the right side of my boat. I'm ready to go fishing there. Next, we will go through this section right here. So that's my, I'm sorry, the right, the right hand side of my boat filled up. We're gonna come up here. And again, I've been, I've had this boat 
I rig it the same way every single year. This is my seven fuel basket, same design. And this rod locker right here, I don't like putting stuff. They have it built for your baits, but it's too close. It's too close. Someone's always standing there fishing. So I put my baits back here in this big one. It allows the guy, Matt Beckman, my dad, Jeff Lewis, Shauna, whoever's up there to keep jig fishing while I'm back here tying on or getting a new lure. So up here, I put all my rain gear. I put my rain gear and my rubber boots, and I have plenty of it. You can never have enough of that stuff. If you have ever been on the lake in a downpour, you will agree that rain gear is the most important thing. I start every single day, unless it's 120 degrees, I start every single day with a pair of bibs on because more times than not, that boat seat's wet and I want to sit my butt down and get it wet right out of the shoe. So I start every day by putting a pair of bibs on um, every single day. And I always have a pair of rubber boots in here. And let me show you what else I put in this, this section right here. Okay, this section right here like we talked about, rubber boots, always. Man, you ever been fishing, your feet get wet? That's the worst. Rubber boots right in there. Rain gear. I have one, two, three, four sets, two fours. I have two sets, two bottoms, two uppers, rain gear right down in there, squash them in there. That's two sets of extra rain gear. That's extra stuff I'm not even gonna wear. I'll start a day with a pair on. I still have two extra. Throughout the day, if it gets bad, I'll swap them out. You can always dry that stuff out. Extra jackets, two extra jackets, three extra jackets in there. If you fall in the lake, you better have extra clothes. Hypothermia could kick in and kill you quickly. And then gloves, miscellaneous glove, miscellaneous stocking caps right in there. You don't want to get cold. And one of my secrets, I've been doing this. This helmet here, I believe, is 22 years old. I put a motorcycle helmet. When it's raining, you want to get back to the boat ramp. And to be safe, you got to be able to see. There's the safe face, or I like this guy right here. I put this on and I can go back 65 miles an hour in the downpour. And that goes right in my boat. I keep this in here. And this thing has been with me for 22 years. I put it in there. So that is this section right here. She's done. She's packed up, ready for us to go tournament fish. On to the next, the next compartment. On to the left side. Left side of the boat. This is where my rods go. In this basket, I have a, I have a rod tubes right there. I set my rods in here. So let's load this thing up with our fishing poles that we're going to use. Um, I, no matter what tournament I'm fishing, I know I'm going to Lake Gunnersville first. I'm not going to be power jig fishing. I already know that. That's not what that lake's about. All black crappie, clear water. I'm not going to be able to use my 15 pound braid, my quarter ounce head, and three inch baits and jig power fish and fish. But I'm still putting them rods in here. There's no sense in not having them in here. So I'm going to put um, some 10 foot rods in here. And I'm also going to put some casting rods in here. I believe I might be casting at Gunnersville. Um, so I'm going to put those in here right now. Okay, so for my rods that I always leave in my boat, I got some short rods, you know, under, under six foot. I've got uh, four of those I'm going to put in here for casting. Casting rods, dock rods, whatever you call them. I always have these in there. Always. This is how I started fishing, and I still enjoy it. I still enjoy casting. Don't do it a lot in tournaments. I don't think I've ever done it in a tournament, but maybe I will down at Lake Gunnersville. So four of those in there, in the rod side, and those will stay in there all year long. Fun if they're spawning on the bank. I like taking a little bit of road runner in a baby shed and throwing up on the bank, reeling back, catching those males. Woo! Fun, fun, fun. And then I put, let's see. For this trip, I'm going to take four 10-foot Kevin Rogers Jinko Signature Series rods and stick them in there just to have my jigging poles, just in case. That's all the rods I'm going to take uh, down to Lake Gunnersville. Those will stay in my boat all time, all year round. Four casting rods, four jigging rods. If I know I'm going to like a one pole ultimate challenge where I'm going to be jigging the whole entire a week i'll load this up with eight or nine jigging rods um, and have eight or nine different color bobby girl and baits on but for this uh, tournament down in alabama i'm getting ready to head to the first one of the year uh, american crappie trail i don't think i'm gonna be jigging 
pretty convinced I'm not going to be jigging. I'm either going to be casting uh, to the bridge piers, shooting docks, or slow trolling. So that's it for the rod locker side. Lock that up. Now <laughs> to the main compartment where all the good stuff happens. This big section right here, see how I'm sitting? Even though I got a dual console, you can still sit here on either side, open this up. This is where all of our Bobby Garland baits and crappie pro heads reside, right here. Back here, you're sitting at the front of the deck. Um, so if I was to break off, if I wanted to change colors, I could come and I sit right here. I sit here and this is where I retie, where I put a new color on while my partner, whoever that person might be, um, stands up there and continues to fish. So that's why I put all these lures back here. Now let's look at the amount of uh, lures I actually carry. And this is no kidding, I've been doing this for 25 years. I have two complete boxes of lead heads. Um, it takes two boxes. I try to get every size I can with spinners, um, inline spinners, the Roadrunner kind, and regular lead heads. And I have 20 four Plano boxes of Bobby Garland baits that go in here. All right, guys, here's the tackle. <laughs> I have 24 regular Plano boxes of every type Bobby Garland bait they make. Like this one right here happens to be, looky there, pile diver. Pile divers and minnow minders right here. That's what this one is. And every one of these has every color Bobby Girl and Bait made. And this is what I enjoy, or I, I have found that these Bass Mafias are probably the best for my jig heads. And that's full of all my jig heads. And I like the, the, the way the layout is for the lead heads instead of a Plano box. They're a little expensive. I can't keep the latches from breaking, but two of those, completely full of jig heads, 24 Plano boxes. Um, and we're gonna put it right here. And this is where this stuff will stay all year long. Let's load it up. Something I have. I have a tray. I've bought a tray that'll actually hold my Plano boxes. And there's another one that comes in my Bass Cat. So most of these will sit down in these trays. And I take this tray boat to boat to boat. And it holds, let's see, two, four, six, holds seven of the of the Plano boxes. And I just slide this right down in here. And that's how I've always done it. And you can see that guy right there. That guy just slides right down in there. And then I have another, um, let's see, four there. So I'll put these four in there right now. Load that's, that up. It's all my, has all my tackle I carry all over the country right there in this big container. That is two complete boxes of jig heads and 24 Plano boxes right here and this guy right here. That is the tackle up front. Now that did not include any trolling rigs so <laughs> we'll go to that next trolling rigs pre-tied rigs um, swivel three-way swivel line coming off of it and I like sometimes we use a bear hook and a minnow don't like doing that at all there's times it's all crappy once but I like having a little bitty lead head and I tie those up all winter long I don't put them on the big tubes I put them back on the uh, plastic keeper they came from we actually use a cap caps and coleman rig i cut the uh, minnow hook off and i tie in little bitty lead heads and we have a bunch of them and we use a bunch of them so let's walk through that right now oh, and i put those in a smaller those little bitty rigs that i'm talking about you can see i've i've tied them up here that one actually has a, a spinner blade and a bead on it with a half ounce weight. And I put those in these smaller boxes and we'll pull out whatever color we're using. At the time, there's a bunch of them here, all kinds of different. I keep those right back here behind the driver's seat. The reason I do that is because when we're in the front of the boat and we are trolling, 
we're in the front of the boat, we're trolling, there's so much going on up there. You have a double seat, you have two guys sitting up there, you have, most of the time you have metal buckets, and right behind us, we have that giant Yeti cooler, that giant Yeti full of water for two purposes. Um, one, to help us weight down the boat, so when the waves are bouncing, we don't bounce as much. Two, when I catch a fish, we turn around, we put it in that cooler like we talked about at the Grenada video, um, and therefore, all those boxes up there are trapped and I can't get to my trolling stuff. So I put my trolling stuff back here where I can always come back and get it. That's why it's here. Okay, next in our boat, you can tell our boat's brand new. It doesn't even have windshields on yet. It's got to go back to the dealer. Um, next thing that we have in our boat that is critical for us is all of our items we use to cull our fish on a day's time, in a day's tournament. Our ropes our chemicals we treat our water with, um, and our scales. And we had a video on that, a fish care video, uh, late last summer of how we call our fish and all that stuff. I put right underneath the seat of this bass cat. This bass cat seat opens up. You have an empty spot there. I keep it there so I can come over here quickly, call my fish, grab a rope, put him in a live well, and go back to work. So... Let me walk you through exactly what we put in this guy right here underneath the seat to cull our fish. Okay guys, back to it. Underneath the passenger seat of my boat where all my culling stuff happens. Cull these fish. The last thing I want to do is be on the lake. Fish is determined not cull my fish property. Easy checker. We showed you we had the B&M, we had the big one. Hopefully you never have to use it. Using this guy, we're probably in trouble. I'm not going to do it in the tournament. Balance beam, if they get so close, if they weigh exactly the same on the scale, which that's happened quite a bit. I mean, you, especially in some certain lakes, you have a lot of the same size fish. Balance beam, if you can't tell what your seven fish is, so always keep that in here. Uh, my chemicals, I like the G-Juice. Uh, I like Stay Alive. I use them both. I treat the crap out of my water. And that goes underneath the seat as well. And it travels with me year round. More G juice. And then the tools. I got scales. I got one, two, three, four, and with five. I got five different scales. I don't want to guess what fish to call. I don't want to do that. I want to know exactly what fish I'm supposed to be calling. Brand new scale out here is pretty cool. Um, it also keeps the seven fish, tells you exactly what your weight is. Kind of like the uh, Rapala, 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 however you want to say it, scales do. These are pretty awesome. I have, <laughs> I have five. I have five scales in my boat and they're going to stay with me all the time. Right there. And the last thing that goes in here my coal ropes and how many coal ropes do I have one two three four five six seven seven coal ropes I don't have eight coal ropes I don't need eight coal ropes I know how to make my fish live my fish die the water cart or the water clear or the water is poor dead as summer they're gonna die no matter what you do keep them cool keep the oxygen going seven ropes i never have eight fish in that live well i started uh last day of american crappie trail they asked you to keep eight we're keeping eight we're giving them to the tournament directors giving them back seven ropes i can't tell you the amount of horror stories from people losing hundreds and hundreds and thousands of dollars thousands and thousands because they weighed in six they threw back their seven fish um, they weighed in eight i've never done that if I suck in a tournament, it's because I suck. One thing that most people don't have in their boat, this is something I started, I learned how to do this in the last year. I have this little airtight waterproof box. You can buy this little Magellan set at uh, uh, Academy Sporting Goods, right? Magellan, air's tight. And inside here, I have these little bitty clips with these weights on them. And this is to, when the fish, when you catch those fish deep, and you got the bends when they come up. You clip these guys to their, to their fins, that right on the side of their fins, and they will sit up straight and they will survive. That's a temporary solution. I put those on over catching fish. 
anywhere from 19 foot down or deeper. In this box, I also have these goodies right here. Oh my goodness, that's stuck. I also have this guy right here, and that is my fizzing tool. And we're going to do videos and show you guys how to fizz these fish. Pretty cool. I started learning this last year. Uh, I caught fish tournament that Shauna and I won down at Lake of the Pines. Every fish we caught was 19 to 20 foot deep. And if I wouldn't have popped those fish, they all would have died in the lost tournament. You do it right, you can actually hear the air come out of these fish. So this is in my boat. We'll do a whole video on this. I put it in here so that stuff so my my, uh, my fizzing tool doesn't get rusty. I don't want them weights getting rusty. And this goes underneath the seat as well. Okay. So that's the back side of our cooler. Pretty cool bass cat. You got this right here. You can put your cell phone right there. Cushion. That's why I keep my cell phone. Cooler underneath. Cooler. Um, the only thing we didn't show you right here. Nothing in there yet because it's not tournament time. This is where all of our food goes. I do let Matt Beckman eat. He doesn't miss a meal on the boat, boys. <laughs> One thing I didn't walk through. This little guy right here. And this is where I keep all my miscellaneous knickknacks and it's just a small guy this is where all the uh, pliers scissors very important tool right there buoy marker buoy marker all your scents all your crappie nibbles scissors pliers can't have enough all your scents mojo slab jam moglo slow jam that goes there well, guys you've asked for it there's the walkthrough of our boat. That's what goes in the boat. We didn't talk about any electronics or anything. This boat is not set up complete yet. Um, I'm taking it back down to the dealer. I'm just getting everything prepped for it. We have, right now, the boat came with a 9-inch helix up front, 9-inch helix in the console. I'm adding to that. It's going back to the uh, dealer. It has an old Trex trolling motor. Amazing. We're adding to it. We're going to put a 12-inch Garmin um, live scope up front and a 15 inch um, Solix uh, in, the, in the console. So we'll have four locators. We'll do a whole section on that. That's what is inside my boat. Last thing we didn't talk about, um, the console and what goes in the glove box. Something I believe in. <laughs> uh, sunscreen, sunscreen, sunscreen. I've had melanoma. You don't want melanoma. It's not something fun. Um, so we, we have a lot of sunscreen in this boat. Also, all of our fishing license, we use ah, all of our registration. Again, we use these little bitty hair tight boxes from Academy Sport. Put all of our fishing license in here, our registration for our boat goes in the glove box along with all of our sunscreen. And whoever's a passenger usually puts their cell phone and their knickknacks in there. Um, that's it. That's all we carry in here. Um, one thing we didn't talk about uh, it, during the tournament hours. Um, I don't have a place to, I'll put over here in the junk drawer. We will charge up a jumper pack um, to jump start batteries instead of having uh, jumper cables in the boat. And I'll put that in here. I only put it in here during the tournament hours. If I keep it in here, it seems like it gets mildewy and it rusts up and it's not good on, the, on that piece of equipment. So I'll keep it charged up and I'll keep it in the back of the truck and I'll throw it in here as need, as we need it during the tournament. During the regular fishing, if my batteries run and the motor don't start, I can turn the motor back. But during the tournament, I need to get back <laughs> to the, to the uh, tournament. A little story on that, my dad and, and my son and I, all three of us, it was a copy of the same event, and you get to fish three people in a boat. We fished all day, it was at Call Lake in Oklahoma. We would start the big motor, it was dead. It was dead, and we had a huge sack of fish. One of the other competitors came over, gave us an extra battery. We were able to swap it out, make it back, and we won the tournament. But thank goodness someone stopped to help us. But that's why I carry that jumper pack in the boat, so I can hook that up to the batteries, and it turns over that uh, the big starting motor because I don't want to be stirring it. But I don't keep it in here all the time. This is what I keep in here on a daily basis. Um, even in... Um, just regular fishing. All this stuff is in here. Just fun fishing. I keep all that scale stuff in here. I weigh my fish even when I'm having fun. I like catching giant crappie. I know what they like, what they weigh. So, for you guys that uh, 
As for this video, here's what we have. We'll go through the electronics part later. This is what's in our boat. That's what we keep in our boat. And we are ready um, to put these Bobby Garland baits to use and catch us some of these big giant crappie. Um, keep sending us your topics you want to hear about. We're going to have Brad Chapel and Justin Berry and uh, um, Lee Pitts and the Humphreys boys. And we're going to have other Bobby Carlin members provide us some content this year. I know you're getting tired of seeing me. So we'll have other pros that uh, do stuff that I don't do, especially like shooting docks. I'm not a dock shooter. I don't do I don't long line. So a lot of people want to see that stuff. We'll get the other pros in here, and we'll get you some videos. So 2019 coming up, Bobby Garland.